What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're gonna jump back over to DC Comics and continue our coverage over Infinite Frontier. This time, we're gonna pick up with Batman with Batman number 106 and Batman number 107. These two issues gives us Scarecrow as the main bad guy for the future of Batman comics. At the same time, we're seeing small pieces being moved around to help build up the future of Batman comics. Like Harley Quinn could be a very important character for a later event. Also, we see a character named Simon Saint who is going to bring a new organization to Gotham City. But the thing is guys, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I do hope you enjoy today's video. To begin today's video, we're going to pick up with Bruce Wayne, except Bruce Wayne has already been captured, it seems like, in this storyline. The question is, when and how did he get captured? We also see that he has been captured by the Scarecrow, who is also known as Jonathan Crane, someone who used fear toxin to hurt his victims, while he is doing that right now to Bruce Wayne making us really wonder if he figured out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. We can also see that Bruce Wayne is trying his best to fight against the fear toxin, but is having a hard time fighting it. Then we jump back before that happened, maybe a couple days, where we see Batman chasing down a new organization that has risen in Gotham, the Insanity Collective who is being led by a man named Master Wise. Now all we know is that this man and his organization have been stealing a ton of valuable items from people who are high up the chain in the media world of Gotham. Also pushing the idea how Gotham has fallen. It needs a new direction. Let's not forget that now Barbara Gordon is no longer Batgirl, just Oracle helping Batman through the computers. Alfred is dead. That is something else to point out. Finally, remember, one of the things from the aftermath from Joker War, Batman lost all of his money. Well, most of it. Then we have to remember another character that was introduced in recent books. That was Ghostmaker. Ghostmaker was someone who had trained alongside Bruce Wayne and they both went to different masters to learn about how to be a well-efficient crime fighter. Except they had a disagreement on why they were becoming vigilantes and led to them not talking for a long time. Well, he reappeared in Gotham fought Bruce Wayne, and after dealing with their issues, he decided to work alongside Bruce Wayne in Gotham. But let's not forget that Ghostmaker will kill if he has to, so Bruce Wayne will have to watch out for that. After Batman is able to take down some of the low-level thugs of the Insanity Collective, one of the thugs gets a call from someone where Batman picks up for him and tells her how her friends are going to jail. She speaks back to him stating that Gotham is no longer his and change is coming. After Batman and Ghostmaker leave, we see Harley Quinn was trying to catch up. This is reminding us that she is part of the Bat family now and trying to be a good superhero. Still in the past, we then pick up with Simon Saint, who is meeting up with the mayor and giving out in presentation, where if you remember back in the Batman titles in the future state books, titles that took place in the future, there were this military organization that took over Gotham to make it better. They were known as the Magistrate. Now that was in a possible future. So we are now setting up the idea of them finally coming together. Simon Saint is the one who is funding this program and trying to convince Mayor Nakano, I do hope I pronounce his name correctly, 
to accept this offer, where for now the mayor tells Simon Saint that they will consider it, but sounds more like it's a no. When the meeting is done, we see outside that someone was watching the meeting. Of course, it seems like it is Scarecrow. Skipping over to Fort Gray, this small neighborhood that Bruce Wayne now lives in since he lost all of his money back in the Joker War. So Bruce Wayne lives here and we see that some neighbors don't like him living there. Also that he has built a smaller version of the Batcave in this basement as a way to still have one. Also mentions he has other Batcaves and different parts of Gotham. This is where Batman and Ghostmaker realize that the people who have been attacked are all part of Gotham's media, and the media usually controls the mood in the city. If the media is going crazy, then the people of Gotham would go crazy. The question is, who is pushing that agenda? Because after Joker War and Bane, this could be the tipping point for Gotham to go mad. To close on the last chapter of Batman 106, we see Mayor Nakano, I really hope I pronounced his name correctly, who is the mayor of Gotham go home. Of course, when he gets home, he is seeing the news about what is happening in Gotham, how the city is going crazy. But behind him, we see that someone has placed a fake Scarecrow figure in his home. With that being the end of Batman 106, leaving us wondering what is going to happen. But we are going to cover Batman 107 right now. And we see once again, Batman is being tortured in the present day, leaving us wondering again how Scarecrow was able to grab Bruce Wayne. Just like the last issue, we jump back in time but pick up after we saw the Scarecrow figure in the mayor's home. We learn the mayor is okay, but word about the incident is playing all over the news, and we see Batman is there while the GCPD are outside, so gives him time to look at the crime scene. Now this is where I want you guys to remember A-Day. It is known as the day Joker had put Joker Toxin in Arkham Asylum and killed many of the prisoners. We were left to believe that Scarecrow had died when that attack happened. Batman in the news tells us that they were tricked when he thought he saw the dead body of Scarecrow. In reality, it was a fake. Somehow Scarecrow has someone replace him in prison. Also that the scarecrow figure he left had no fear toxin at all, just a fear symbol in a way. Before Batman is able to do any more detective work, of course, he is greeted by Renee Matoya. For y'all out there who may not know who she is, she was one of those characters that appeared in Batman the Animated Series as a cop, got popular over there, and then transitioned into comics. Well, she was no longer a cop. But thanks to Mayor Nakato, he convinced her to come back to the force. This is also reminding us that the GCPD and Batman no longer have an alliance. Jumping over to the other side of town, we pick up in Electric City, another part of Gotham, where we see this man named Stabo who is going around talking about the concrete jungle and other jungles they're all around Gotham, how he needs to put people in the ground to protect them from the jungle. The roots will bring the city down. This is just someone talking about something to come down the road. The question is, when are we going to see it? Now, this crazy guy is stopped by Harley Quinn, continuing the idea of her being a good guy now. She stops him and leaves because the cops came around. Well, really, she is saved by Ghostmaker, but she does go away. Except after she left, we see that someone was watching. A young lady was watching her. Seems like she has something to do with Harley Quinn, talking about how Harley is back in town. Focusing back on Batman, we see him meeting up with Barbara Gordon. 
where they go over different clues about what is going on with the Insanity Collective and Scarecrow. To Batman though, his main objective is to figure out more about the Insanity Collective because their leader, Mr. Mays, is talking about him being able to get his hand on some Mad Hatter tech. Instead of using it to control people, they claim that they had found a way to wipe the mind of someone. Barbara Gordon points out that his group wants to make Gotham a better place, but going in the wrong direction on how to do it. This section closes with Batman leaving to go to an abandoned mall because Barbara Gordon got word that maybe the Insanity Collective is working out of the abandoned mall, so Batman leaves to go over there, but she did say he may need to go undercover. Skipping over to Simon Saint, we see him working on some stuff where his assistant comes in and tells him about how Simon Saint has been invited to the new memorial for A-Day, aka the attack on Arkham. But then someone commands Simon to tell his assistant to leave, which the assistant does. This is where we learn that Simon Saint and Scarecrow are working together. Their plan is to plunge the city deep in fear, which in return will help Simon Saint launch the magistrate program that he has been trying to push. To get that step, some people are going to die, and Scarecrow is wondering if Simon Saint will be okay with that happening. To close on this video, we see someone walking up to the abandoned mall where there is a guard there. The guard asks why in the world this mysterious person is here for, and the man says he needs to talk to the boss of the place. We see that Bruce Wayne has begun the process of going undercover as one of his old alias and calls himself Match. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.